Hi guys, this is Jayashi and welcome back to my channel. This video that I'm doing is about my trip to Kasol and all the details that you need to know about how to get them. Uh, so the most asked question was my budget for the trip. Uh, my budget was 30,000 which was inclusive of travel, food and stay. Um, the second thing that was asked was how to travel to Kasol from Chennai. So you can either travel to Delhi or to Chandigarh. Um, I think a Chandigarh is closer to Kasol, so like the bus travel would be less, like time taking would be less. Uh, the bus from Delhi to Kasol, however, is about 12 hours. Uh, I did not know that Chandigarh was an option until later when like another friend suggested it, which is why I booked Delhi. So yeah, uh, we spent about 8,000 human flow for the tickets from Chennai to Delhi and Delhi to Chennai. And uh, the bus tickets from Delhi to Kasol were about 1,000 to 1,200. So the bus doesn't exactly drop you at Kasol. It drops you at Buntar, which is like a little lower than Kasol. So from Buntar, you can either take a cab or a government bus. A government bus would be cheaper. I think it's about 30 bucks for a ticket. But uh, I get sick when I travel, like especially in the mountain, I have like major motion sickness and travel sickness, so I decided to take a cab. The cab was about 1,300 bucks, but if you're like in a group, um, you know, a bigger group, it works out cheaper, so I mean, but it's your call, like if you take the bus, you save a lot of money. Um, when you get to Kasol, like from there, there are a lot of places that you could check to or stay in and most of them are accessible by cabs and some of them they drop you at the checkpoint and you can just check on up from there. Um, and then you need like a couple of things like, you know, when you go checking. So one would be a backpack and the second most important thing would be uh, your checking shoes because you know, checking shoes have a lot more grip than like regular running shoes or whatever, so I would definitely suggest that you buy that. And if you're traveling in the monsoon season, a poncho is a must. Like when we were there, it'd be so sunny, but we, we'd always have like our ponchos in our bag. It'd be so sunny when we leave, like five minutes in walking down, it'll start pouring. So a poncho is definitely a must. Uh, I'm going to show you my uh, backpack. This is uh, from the brand Mount Track and this is an 80 litre backpack. I was travelling for 10 days and I needed a really big bag so I got this. It has a like, great support in the back and it has like uh, a strap that you could put around your waist and one that will come around your chest and this is amazing. It, it fit everything. I had like sweaters and like, like a lot of pants and tops and makeup and everything and it fit. It was quite heavy, like when I left, it weighed around 9 kilos. It doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're carrying it on your back, it's a lot. So I definitely suggest packing light. And um, yeah, and this was about 1,800 bucks and I bought it on Amazon. But I recently checked it out and I guess the price has increased. I'll definitely leave the link if I find it. And uh, these were my checking shoes. This is from the brand Wildcraft. They have, the grip was so good and these are waterproof. So these were actually priced at uh, 6,000 to 6,500 bucks. But uh, when I wanted to order them, they had like a buy one, get one deal. So it was amazing. So I got it for about 3,000 bucks. I would definitely recommend this. But if you want to go ahead and like uh, check out some other brand, you're more than free to. Um, if you're in Chennai or like any other city that has decathlon, um, they have like amazing sporting equipment so you could definitely go there and check some stuff out as well. Uh, Torchlight is another most important thing because you don't really have street lights there and it gets pretty dark in the night and uh, the torchlight on your phone definitely isn't going to cut it. So I would suggest you buy like a nice battery operated powerful torchlight to carry with you. And in terms of clothes like I'd say carry like one or two hoodies or sweatshirts and maybe like a like I'd say carry a lot of jogger pants and like um, jeans maybe not so much maybe like one pair like I definitely didn't carry enough pants I thought that that would be the last thing I'd need but I ended up buying like pants from there because I like fell while I was checking and I dirtied my pants and yeah so that was quite bad. Uh, 
So the first day that we got there, we stayed in this place called O Magic View Cafe, which was like a 20 minute check, uh, check from Kasol. It was in between Kasol and Shalal. The view from that place was breathtaking, guys. Like uh, the food and stuff, honestly, and there were a lot of flies. And the room was pretty decent. It had a bathroom attached. And like I, I didn't have any issues with the room, but the food was quite bad. So every time we want a meal, we come down to Kasol and like have our, our food. But the view from there was amazing, and you could like we had a speaker to play music, but the uh, noise from the uh, valley was like overpowering. But it was so beautiful. Um, and places to eat in Kasol are so many nice places. Uh, my favorite would be Shambhu Momo, which was like a small street shop and he'd like serve you 10 pieces of momos for like 100 bucks. Honestly, it's like the best pair, uh, like momos I've ever eaten. Um, and another place that I really like was Literally. They have like a fusion of like Italian, Indian. So like most of the places have like Indian, Italian and a lot of Israeli food as well. Uh, so yeah, literally would be like the second best place. Uh, Moon and Dance Cafe was also amazing. We have like a small uh, waffle and pancake shop right outside as well. And uh, so right before I left to Kasol, I like watched a couple of uh, vlogs and like um, read a couple of blogs as well. Uh, a lot of people suggested Evergreen Cafe. So the place is amazing. The vibe is great. But honestly, I didn't like the food so much. Like what I ordered, I ordered like some uh, chicken and it was very stale and I had to return it back and I got like paneer instead, which is also not that great. Uh, but nobody else who ate there with me had any issues. So yeah, you should at least go there for the vibe of the place. It was quite nice. Uh, uh, so we, uh, we stayed in Kasol for like the first night and then the second day, we left and we went to Kalga. Uh, Kalga is about like a 45 minute uh, drive from Kasol and you trek from there all the way. Like they leave you at the dam, which is like the trek starting point, and you can trek upwards. Which it took us about 20 to 30 minutes to get up there. Uh, so I wasn't able to like carry my bag on my own because it was quite heavy and the trek was quite steep as well. So we got like porters to carry our bags. They charge about uh, from like 100 to, I don't know, 250, 300, depending on the weight of your bag and the distance. Uh, but if you're able to carry your bag on your own, that's great. Like you could just do that instead of spending money on like porters. But that's what I did. That was my personal choice because I definitely couldn't carry my bag. Uh, the first place that we stayed in uh, Kalga was Sacred Garden. Cafe, which was amazing. Like uh, one of the best things about Kalga is that you can just drink water straight out of the taps. Like they come straight from the Himalayas, and trust me, it was way better than the regular water that we drink. And the place itself is just so calm and serene and just like blissful. Like I love staying there. Honestly, it was so nice. Um, and most of the places in Kalga give you like a, a set food menu, like they have like roti, a little bit of dal, uh, channa and some rice. Um, but we moved on from, we stayed in Sacred Cafe, uh, Sacred Garden for like two nights and then we moved to Village and Wild Cafe. This place was insane, like the vibe was just amazing, so in the night they have like these uh, UV ray lights and like these neon lights and like should be paintings everywhere and it was amazing and these people have like a, a menu card so you can just like order whatever you want. I mostly lived on their cheese maggi and their chicken pakora. It was so good. Their food was honestly amazing. I think they have their on Instagram as well so you can check out their place. It's amazing. Uh, what else do I need to tell you? Oh uh, yeah, so um, we also, there's, there's like this other cafe in uh, Kanga called Himalayan Cafe. So we went there a couple of times to eat as well and um, the, the food there was great also. Um, you find dogs everywhere. They're like puppies and dogs just like walking around and you can just like play with them and it's so great. Um, 
a meal cost in Kasal or anywhere in like the neighboring like towns or whatever is quite expensive. I'd say it would range from like 300 to 600 for one person. Like if you order two dishes, like maybe if you even order like a drink and like a main course, it's gonna cost you more than 500 bucks. So meals are quite expensive there. And uh, the most, most, most important thing is that you carry entire, like carry cash. Please, please, please carry cash. Uh, I think there's like one ATM there which doesn't have cash, and uh, you you can't really withdraw money from anywhere there, and they, you can't pay by card. They deal only with cash. So I definitely suggest that you carry a lot of cash with you. Uh, like you know how much you're gonna spend, right? Like um, a room there would cost about 400 to 800 a night, like depending on where you're staying. The most expensive room that uh, I saw in Kalga was 1,500 bucks. They had a bathroom attached. Most places in Kalga does not have a bathroom attached. They just have like a common bathroom space and everybody who's staying there has to use that common space. There was only one place uh, that had uh, a bathroom attached in the room and it was 1,500 bucks but uh, the place almost like the room didn't look that great, it wasn't worth 1,500 bucks so we just decided to not waste money and stay there. And even in Kasol, rooms would be about 800 bucks. I think Hostalo was the most expensive and the most popular place there, we didn't go there. But I did see a couple of pictures and it looked great, maybe you should try it out. Uh, like I think their rooms were 1,200 bucks but they also have like dorm rooms which were honestly very reasonable. And it looked really great like for a dorm room, so you could definitely try that out as well. Uh, so yeah, uh, I would suggest to carry cash. Uh, definitely, even if like carry a little bit of extra in case of emergency. I didn't, I carry exactly how much I thought I needed. Uh, but like by the time I got back to Delhi, I literally had like 20 bucks left in my wallet. I didn't account for like all this shopping expenses and I had 20 bucks left when I got back and I just had to run to an ATM and withdraw some cash to be able to spend. Uh, yeah, I don't think I've left any details out. Uh, oh yeah, we did go to Bashini but we just went there to like this cafe and like uh, chill for a bit and we got back, that was like a 15, 20 minute trek downwards. It was super narrow and scary but the view again was great so like every place there has an amazing view so yeah i loved um going there literally every day i want to go back and just be in that place it's such a magical place to be in um yeah that's about it so if you guys have anything else that you need to know or want to know that i've missed out in this video please leave a comment below and i'll definitely get back to you thank you so much for watching